So we got radial symmetry. It's one of the big ones, the big creative features that everybody requests. Uh, ZBrush has had it for such a long time um, and, and it's quite common in a lot of other programs that do what's called an array function. So you can edit things around a symmetrical point. So let's have a look at what that actually means and where it's useful to you as an artist. So first of all, let's create something that we can do some symmetrical modeling and painting on. So we'll go up to our scene menu, or we'll just pick cylinder, and then we'll just change the parameters. So we'll scale it up a little bit with the on-screen controls. We'll take a look at the bottom wire, so we can see that it's quite um, averaged out uh, polygon. So that's, that's what we definitely want for the sculpting. So they're quads and they're square. So as we, as we sculpt on it, we'll get nice predictable geometry. So we'll validate that. Uh, let's come up and we'll subdivide it a few times because I want lots of polygons to play with, about a million, a million three, I think it was. Turn the wireframe off and let's get a nice metallic material. So we've gone lowish on the roughness, highish on the, me the metalness, and we'll just force paint that. So now we've got a... Um, a cylinder to work on. So first of all, let's have a look at symmetry in its normal form before we got um, radial symmetry. So if I use the move tool and I've got symmetry switched on and I just move across uh, left and right, and basically it moves it on the left and on the right because it's symmetrical across the central axis, the X axis there. So we know that, that's quite straightforward and symmetry is controlled up here. So we'll pin that that means we can keep looking at that while we're, we're working. So these planes here, you can switch them on and off. So that's the X, Y, and the Z plane. And as you can see below under radial, it's giving you the option to change a parameter as you turn them on and off. So if they're all off, you won't get anything. The one that's on, you, 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 you will. So you can see there's got, um, let's turn them all off. Try and tap any of the radial settings and nothing happens. Turn them all on and they're all available to you there. So if you were to do X radial and you put a number in of six and then do what we did before, you can see what's happening there. It's not working, it is working. You can see the dots that shows you the, 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 where the symmetry is happening, but it's working around a different plane than we would want for this particular model. So you've always got to understand your X, Y, and Z and the orientation you are. This is um, world, so we're set to um, world symmetry. So it will be around the center of the world rather than the center of the model. So let's think about that again, different way. So that six, we'll change that back down to zero. That means, or, or one, should I say, so a symmetry of one. And the one that we're going to want is this one, which is Y. So we'll go six, in fact, we'll go eight on this one. And then if you look and you use the move tool, let's use it at the bottom, see what happens. And now it's working symmetrically around. So at its, at its basic level, we can just do this kind of thing, which is like crazy pottery without having to do a lathe. So that, that in itself can be quite useful just for making all kinds of things really. Um, because you're just moving a model based on the symmetry of that particular point that you're at. So that that is useful for you in a number of ways. But where it gets really useful is when you start using brushes like um, uh, clay, for example, is a good one. So what we'll do is we'll go for a smaller brush and I'll just show you right on the surface, show you like this. So now you can see we're doing eight points all the way around like so, going to the end. And as we build it up, they're going to meet as they come around the symmetry. So that in itself is fantastic for jewellery work. It's great for design work, for pottery work, for if you're making armour and, and things like armour, uh, uh, greaves for your arms and, you know, uh, anything that needs these kind of symmetrical patterns, then that, that, that becomes super useful. Let's just do one thing. We'll hit sub, and that means we're now going carving in so 
Let's undo the first two that we've done. I've gone too far there, so we'll just redo. Now, with sub on, you can see you're going to indent into the surface. So if you if you want some nice intricate um, you know, flowers or veins or something like that, then you can easily do that. And if you wanted to do something like some kind of negative basket weaving, you could do this kind of effect and go left and right like this. And as you build it up like that, you're going to get this weaved effect. So you're going to be able to do really cool, you know, basketing, uh, basket weaving and uh, any kind of, you know, uh, organic multiple strands in a line so again super useful where i use it a lot is i'm going to turn perspective off i'm going to snap it to the front like so i'm going to go over to let's say sel mask which is a masking feature rectangle mask here on the right and i'll just mask the top and the bottom like so then we'll go back to normal mask make sure we've got a small brush so we're now not modeling, we're just masking, but the symmetry works exactly the same. So now all we're doing is we're protecting those areas with masking. And why is that useful? Well, if we carry on, we just make some more intricate designs. Bear in mind, this is only with eight on. You can try this with like 30 or 100 or, you know, depending on what your system says you're allowed, um, you just go for it. Just get as many of them going as you, as you, as you can. So there's quite a few, um, I, I don't know, I want to call them veins or flower, you know, or like vining, vining, uh, trailing plants or something like that, but stylized. So, I mean, it really doesn't matter. This is completely up to you. Joining them up like that. Okay, so you've got all sorts of that going on. And then if we just come up to our stroke, sorry, not our stroke, our settings for the uh, mask. And then we've got a shell thickness of 0.3, border smoothness quite high, and we'll just extract and see what we get. So click the extract, and then, oops, did an undo then by mistake. Extract, and then solo. And as you can see, we've got all of that filigree work done for us in one go. Now, it is quite rough on this um, because of the way extraction can work. So, But with a simple smooth, you'll see exactly what can happen. And you're smoothing with your radial symmetry on as well. So you can very quickly turn that back to um, a, a really nice, smooth, you know, filigree sculpted uh, model. Let's just turn matte cap on. And we'll have a look at it with um, a really flat mat cap to see what's happening. There you can see a little bit better there. So let's continue with uh, symmetrical modelling on this. So we've got the ability now just to carry on exactly as we were. And you're sculpting on top of the extracted model now. So you've got, you, you know, you've got the same settings that you can play with there and you can really go to town. If your thing is uh, repeating patterns or tessellation of patterns, then you're going to absolutely love this because you can really work out some intricate designs. Um, and, you, you know, you can change that radial setting and get, um, I mean, we're only using eight here. We haven't even changed it. So you can really work out a really cool design that works for you. And then do stuff like this where, I mean, we, again, we've set this just to eight. So... Just to give you an example, um, change that up now to something ridiculous. So let's go up to 64. And then those things that I was just doing, we'll turn them back off and we'll do them properly. So with radial on now, you can predictably do exactly what I was just doing, but in a really, really controlled fashion. So that, that would be useful, again, for jewellery, for um, uh, a lot of mechanical, you know, engine parts that need this symmetry as well. So, yeah, in fact, we'll do it a few more things like this. And you'll see exactly what I mean. So there's a, like a, a, a coil effect at the bottom there. Let's just go back to our... Um, PBR, 
and we'll change it to something um, just a different metal like that so you can see the effect of it there. So you you can really uh, get a lot of effects just from this one um, uh, feature and you can see why someone who, you know, it, why why you would want to wait for something like this because it's such a great feature uh, and, it, and it's so powerful for, for making weaponry, um, uh, certain parts of armor, uh, even some organics, uh, as you can see here. So, have a go with that. Let's uh, let's see what you you can do with that crazy new feature. And don't forget to show us on the forums. Don't forget you can also use other tools. So we've got the paint tool, for example, um, and you could come with a smaller brush, and we'll go with like a bright red, so you can really see it, and you can paint symmetrically as well. So you could, uh, again, you could have sculpted something crazy and now you can go and put, you know, a, a lot more detail in there with the painting as well as the, the sculpting. So there are lots of options in other tools as well. So I'd love to see what you do with that. So join us on our Facebook group or if you want to share it in the Nomad forum, then take a look at that as well. Um, there's so many new features coming through thick and fast from Stefan from uh, who, who who codes Nomad. It's just an incredible program. It's getting better every single week. It's unbelievable what that what that guy is doing with this program. So have a have a look at it. See if it's something that works for you. There's actually loads of other tools that work with symmetry. So first of all, let's try trim. So you can just get any old object set your radial in any of the ways that you've that you've seen in the early part of the video so let's just um just set some random ones on and then use the ellipse tool and there we go you can just clip out in all different kinds of ways and obviously it'd be better if you just control it a bit better so um let's turn oh, uh, let's just turn y on um like so and just have that to four and then a better way to do this is turn perspective off and snap it and then let's use the um, rectangle and then you can see you can, it's it, it with you know with a bit more predictable um, a bit more planning you can really get some nice effects um, so another one that would always be useful um, is uh, insert which is the opposite of, of trim really so take a look at the insert brush come down here insert and we'll use insert sphere and we'll just insert that on the sphere and there you can see there's plenty of, uh, of options to get some craziness going on um, with with the insert and the radial so have a play with all of those there's there's plenty of tools to you this could take you quite a while to get through all of these individual parts but it's a feature that we've wanted for such a long time and for wheels and it you know ornaments vases you name it this is this is going to be useful so there'll be a lot of stuff coming out um i think with people experimenting and playing with the radial symmetry and showing some amazing stuff so we've finally got a full green screen now. So we had this in our other studio, but, but for one reason or another, we had to move from that studio um, because of sound issues. Um, and now we're back here. The sound isn't brilliant in this room, um, but we can live with that because we've got a nice green screen and much better control of lighting. So we'll do more uh, face to camera kind of work over the next few months. So look out for that. <laughs> 